Hey, good morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're gonna to take a look at an antenna from Chameleon Antennas. This is somewhat of a sponsored video as they sent me two of the items you're gonna see in this video. Uh, but I'm not gonna let that get in the way of sharing with you my observations and my experiences and how I plan to use this. Everybody's needs are different, so please keep in mind these are gonna be my style of operation. So they reached out to me and asked if I would take a look at an antenna that they're releasing later this year. I said fine, but then they also asked if I did portable work in HF. I said yes. And they decided to send me their lightweight NFED half-wave sloper. And what caught my eye was that it is a multi-band antenna that covers six bands, 40, 20, 17, 15, 12, and 10 without a tuner. And I absolutely despise tuners. I have two of them, but I never take them with me into the field because it's extra gear, extra failure points, and I run QRP, and I want to have the best antenna system and use all of that RF power. So I typically prefer resonant antennas. So uh, they said portable, and I need to make sure I frame what portable is to me. Uh, so I'm a man portable operator, which means I take my backpack, put all my radio gear in there, everything I need for support, and all of my support gear, food, water, medical, for the day, shelter system. So weight is an issue. Uh, the second problem I have is that we don't have trees out here in the Sonoran Desert, or at least trees that are suitable for antennas. So this unit comes in a bit larger and heavier, in my mind, for portable work out here in the desert. It comes in at 1.5 pounds and requires a sturdy mast. I typically just have a six meter carbon fiber mast. This thing will not hold the weight. Uh, the recommendation is that this antenna is deployed at 25 feet. So it makes it a non-starter for me to take this man portable in a backpack. But for other people in the country or across the country that have heavy masks that they can carry with them or trees, there's nothing wrong with this approach. So I plan to use this in a slightly different setup, um, which we're gonna get into it in a second. They also uh, provided with me 50 feet of RG58 with the integrated RFI choke. This is their recommended cable. And this is something I'm testing for them that I don't believe is available yet. It's an 80 meter extension, which will presumably give us seven bands. So very excited about this. So given the size and weight of this antenna, I've opted to put it in its own bag and use this for very specific use case. So for me, it'll be in the vehicle, that'll be my Jeep or my wife's car, in the motorhome when we travel, and for operations where we're gonna be close to the car, like eight parks on the air uh, or field day. So I believe that's the intended portable use case. Um, again, if I had trees, I probably could go man portable with this as well. And just for some context and sizing, this is typically my man portable HF setup. It is a monoband, just single band uh, antenna. Uh, it's a 20 meter antenna, but I can run a 40 meter element. And then I run RG316. Together, this weighs five and a half ounces. Uh, this antenna is about 1.5 pounds, and I haven't measured the RG58 yet, uh, plus the additional elements. Uh, so keep that in mind. Now, what I do love about this already is that this is very rugged, so it's in alignment with the tools, not toys philosophy we've had on the channel. I'm gonna to try to get this right. The wire is incredibly rugged. This is a 20 gauge, um, you know what? I'm just gonna read it. All right, so this is 20 gauge copper clad Kevlar Teflon wire. It's 63 feet in length. So this thing is gonna be beautiful. I also reached out to their support team and asked what the preferred way was to store this. Uh, they said a figure eight is fine over the wire winder um, and there's no memory, so you don't have to worry about it having some weird kinks, which is really cool. Now it does use a SO239 connector. Uh, my preference is, is B and C, but since I'm using it with their preferred uh, RG58 cable that uses PL259, not a big deal. Uh, I'm using some slightly different paracord. I forget which one this is, but this is typically what I have in my bag. They also do provide uh, their own paracord. It's about the same dimensions, uh, but I prefer this kind of more desert tan uh, look. So the plan for today is to have a very long video. So I'll put uh, chapter markers down below. 
and we're going to do two things. We're going to do two deployments. The first is their preferred or the primary deployment, which is running this in a sloper configuration. So all we're going to do is hoist this antenna up 25 feet. We're going to attach our feed line and that's going to drop down 25 feet and have 25 feet of cable to run to wherever you want to set up your radio. Then the wire is going to come down in a sloper configuration that will tie off. Then we're going to take our SWR meter and we're going to take SWR measurements across all six bands and see where we land and see how resonant this is. And then we're going to do some voice on um, as many bands as we can. I will tell you, I made my first set of contacts on um, 17 meters or 18 megahertz with this. So very excited that I was able to get a first experience with this antenna already. Um, the second deployment is going to be a little bit more interesting and the one that I'm really interested in, and that's running this as an Envis configuration. And basically that will give us regional and local communication, especially with the additional element, which I hope will be uh, sufficient for us. I plan to run it on 40 and 80 for Envis so that we can get local coverage in the state of Arizona and maybe some of the surrounding states. So we're going to drop the uh, center mast from 25 feet down to 16 or 15. And then I have another mast on the other side of my property. And hopefully the 63 feet wire will be uh, short enough where it'll fit between those two posts. And then we'll run it as a flat top. So parallel to the earth. So we have that Envis uh, configuration. And we're gonna do uh, voice later this evening on 40 meters. And we're gonna try if it works on 80. If for some reason it doesn't work on 80, um, because 80 technically is 75 megahertz and 80, where 75 megahertz is voice and 80 is more the digital portion. We'll try one of those and see how that works out. Um, let me see if I have any more notes real quick. Nope, that's it. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to deploy this on the mast and start out with the sloper configuration, take some measurements, and uh, it'll be a long video. So watch out for those chapter markets, chapter markers. More coffee is needed. All right, guys, see you in a bit. All right, folks, so I have the uh, antenna in my hand here. I have all of the wire and paracord uh, removed from the wire winder. And all I'm gonna use is a S-clip carabiner. I think this is a number three size. And I'm gonna go ahead and clip it onto this attachment point here. This doesn't come with it, just I'm a big fan of these. So we're gonna run this up real quick and uh, see how we do. And then on the... Uh, painter's pole, all I have is an overhand knot and wrapped around the threads. And we're going to want to make sure we have the RFI choke, this portion here, attached to the feed point. Now, one thing I believe Chameleon recommends is that you have an elbow connector. I don't have one for the SO239 PL259, so we're going to do the best we can. All right, that's the first section. OSHA would not be happy. Don't have three points of contact. All right, so I'm gonna clean up this cable mess, but we're up 23 and a half feet. That's about 1.5 feet short of the recommendation. All right, cleaned up that coax a bit. Uh, there's a little bit of a bend, but not bad. I think we're gonna see more of a bend when we go ahead and uh, deploy uh, this line out. Again, it's 63 feet, and then I have uh, a good length of paracord. So I'll turn the camera around, and uh, we'll see what type of sloper we can do. All right, so we have everything tied off. I have it uh, wrapped around a rock, actually. And if you can see this cable, or the wire, we're going up and up and up. And I would say right now we're up about maybe 21, 22 feet, and it's mostly because there is a pretty significant curve here. And again, it just has to do with the weight of the antenna and me using a, a three-section telescoping mast. So I can't do anything about that. It's the gear I have, the gear I use, and in the end of the day, this is how I'm going to run this antenna. So your performance may improve if you have a better mast. All right, let's jump in the shack and... Um, do some testing. Actually, let's go in the shack. I'm 
there's no lights here. So we're gonna set up over here and we're gonna run our SWR measurements with the Rig Expert AA35 Zoom. All right, so it's the following day. I took some SWR measurements. I'm only gonna go over uh, a few of them, not all of them. Everything else will be on the screen. So for 40 meters, which is a band I use a lot, uh, the SWR was at 1.68 with the frequency or the min frequency at uh, 7.294 megahertz. 20 meters, which is another band I use a lot, I had the lowest SWR at 1.17 and that was for a frequency of 14.343 megahertz. Uh, 17 meters is one that I'm starting to enjoy these days. It had a slightly higher SWR at 2.2 and that was for a frequency of 18.166. Uh, I'm not gonna go into 15, 12, or 10. Those are bands I typically do not work. In fact, I have never worked those bands, but I'll leave it up on the screen. So hopefully today is not gonna be another contest weekend, and we'll see if we can make some contacts. All right, guys, we're gonna cheat a little bit here and get some help from the uh, Twitter army. I'm on uh, 40 meters right now, and I'm gonna see if there's anybody that uh, will help me do some testing and maybe jump through all the different bands. CQ, 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 this is Kilo Tango One Romeo Uniform November, also go by the name The Tech Prepper, testing out a new antenna, the Lightweight and fed half wave sloper by Chameleon Antenna. Just looking for a test here. Again, the call here is Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform November, calling CQ, CQ, CQ. Kilo 6, Hotel Zulu Radio. Kilo 6, Hotel Zulu Radio. Hey, Jose, is that you? Roger, Roger, Gaston. You're coming in a solid 5757 into SoCal. All right, guys, that was pretty cool. That was my buddy, uh, Jose. This is the first time we've made a contact. Him and I have been going back and forth on uh, Twitter for a while. Uh, he also sent me a, a really cool mask that I haven't uh, deployed yet. But uh, yeah, it's always fun when you can make a, a contact with a known uh, person. He's out in California. So I'm gonna switch over to uh, probably uh, 20 meters right now. Take your contest, take your contest. Kilowatt, kilowatt five, Italy. Kilo Tango one, Romeo Uniform, November. Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform November, you are 59, number 1. Okay, I got the number 1. What's your call? Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform November. Is it K1 Juliet Echo November? Negative. Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform November. Uh, please try again the call. Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform November. QSL, you're number one. Thank you for the call. Seventy-three. All right, so we got a contact on 20 meters. I was running a 70 watts. Uh, he kept on throwing me off by saying kilowatt tango. I kept on hearing KWT. Uh, I can't stand non-standard phonetics, but uh, that's just one of my little quirks. Uh, but yeah, we made that contact and uh, even handed out one point, even though I'm technically not doing uh, the contest. So I still want to hit a couple of other bands before uh, we call this one uh, quits for the day. Thank you, contest. Thank you. Thank you, contest. Charlie, Japan, 3 Alpha. Charlie, Japan, 3 Alpha. Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform, November. A QRZ contest from Charlie, Japan, 3 America. Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform, November. Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform, November. All right, guys, that's the uh, contest that was going on yesterday. I'm actually on 15 meters. Uh, this signal is great, uh, but apparently the other station can't hear me. Uh, this would have been my first um, success on 15 meters, but not quite there yet. CQ, 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 this is Kilo Tango 1, Romeo Uniform November, looking to test out my antenna and make any contact, calling CQ, CQ, CQ on 17. All right, I'm going to call it quits for the day. We'll get back on the air later. HF is a fickle thing. All right, folks, it's the following Monday, and I'm taking one for the team. I'm skipping my lunch trail run, 
and I have uh, redeployed the antenna. We're now going to test the Envis deployment. And all I did here is essentially drop this end of the antenna down to uh, 15 feet. And then I'm running now it as a flat topper to the other end of my property. And I have an identical painter's pole, the Mr. Longarm over there. So we just need to cut through this mess and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so as promised, here's the other Mr. Longarm and we're up 15 feet and it's going right over the top of that Palo Verde. So I think we're all set to go. And uh, this is the deployment I really want to test because I'm more interested in targeted local and regional communications. So we're gonna be doing some 40 meter NVIS tonight and we're, to test that, we're gonna use Winlink. We've got a station about uh, 60 miles west of us. See you guys tonight. All right, guys, I got a few minutes before um, lunch is over and I decided to connect my Yesu 857D man pack. Haven't used this in a while and it is connected to my Raspberry Pi 3B Plus and it has my old digital setup with cat control and everything. And uh, for a test, I decided to uh, connect my phone uh, to the hotspot and actually try out a little bit of Winlink on 40 meters. And just listen to this for a second. So we're having an active Winlink session with a station that's in Wickenburg. It's 70 kilometers from my location and I am pulling down a ton of emails. I've already downloaded four uh, since I want to go scramble to get this uh, uh, recorded. I didn't think it was going to be, um, we were going to have a session this quickly. So very cool stuff. I'm actually kind of impressed that the uh, flat topper with the uh, Chameleon Lightweight and fed sloper on 40 meters uh, right out of the gate. We have our first uh, connection to that station that is just on the other side of the hill. And we're doing it with five watts. Not a whole lot of power here, guys. So this is exactly um, a different experience than I was hoping for yesterday where we were dealing with the contest weekend and just a bunch of random contacts. So for me and what I want to do on HF and in amateur radio in particular, it's more about targeted uh, local and regional communication. And this is a perfect example. I had set out uh, to basically deploy the end of his antenna, get on 40 meters, and specifically make a contact with that station, which we did. And just looking right now, we're close to having downloaded more than a half dozen emails already. So for me already, I got to tell you that this antenna is a keeper, but um, we'll talk a little bit more about all my thoughts, the good, the bad, and the ugly uh, when I'm done with work today. So hopefully you guys will uh, enjoy this little quick uh, ad hoc uh, Winlink demonstration. Wasn't planning on filming it, but I think it's going to be good enough for the sake of saying, yeah, Envis on 40 works with this antenna. All right, cheers guys. It's finally quitting time. Hopefully you enjoyed the short tour that I did. I was testing the Chameleon Lightweight NFET Sloper for a couple weeks now. Took you along with most of my testing, which was nice. But let's talk about what we accomplished. We did two deployments. The first was the Sloper configuration. That was pretty easy to deploy. The only issue that I saw was just a slight bend due to the weight of the antenna at that height. Not a big deal. Uh, I think if I had a better mass, that would not be a problem but I was able to make voice contacts on 40 meters, 20 meters, 17 meters. And then we had good receive on 15, but wasn't able to make a contact. I think if I gave it more time, would not have been an issue. And then I did not have any time to test 12 meters or 10 meters. But all bands were under a two to one SWR. Uh, the 17 meter was the only one that was really at that two to one SWR. Everything else was like 1.5 or lower, which was great. Uh, we did a second deployment today, which is my preferred deployment, and that's the Envis or Near Vertical Incident Skywave deployment to allow for local and regional communication. And that was 100% a success when we had the two poles at 15 feet and the flat top configuration on 40 meters. I had set out to hit that station that is 73 kilometers from my position. I guess that's 45 miles for the Americans. I'm an American. Um, but... Uh, that was the fastest, most reliable Winlink session I've had going into uh, that station. Uh, I've been doing or hitting that station for about a year and a half now with a variety of antennas, and there were no disconnects uh, in the handful of sessions I tried today. 
So I am very pleased and I attribute that probably mostly to that antenna and the way that I had it deployed. And again, I'm not a contester, so while this antenna is multi-band and uh, will allow me to make contacts across the country and throughout the world, I am more interested in that last test that we did, which was the Envis setup, because I really only care about local contacts and targeted local contacts. Now, they did send me the 80 meter uh, extension or element. I did not have a chance to play with this. I wanna give it uh, its time and really experiment with it. So we're gonna do this as a separate video at some point where we're just gonna go ahead and again, probably do the sloper configuration and then the Envis deployment. Um, in general, I really like the antenna. It was nice not to carry a tuner. Uh, I don't carry tuners to begin with. So uh, it was really interesting on Saturday for me to be able to jump across the bands. I never have that luxury. I always have to either bring up another antenna or disconnect and reconnect an element. So the ability just to have a multi-band antenna was uh, kind of spoiled me this weekend in my testing. Uh, let's see what else. So the only issue I would see for me in being a manned portable operator was the size and weight of the antenna system. Uh, so I plan to use this only in the RV when we travel. And the reason for that is, again, I have a problem where I have the mass that I have. Uh, it's not terribly uh, rigid to hold large weights and it's eight feet in length. So it's not really well suited for me to put my mast in either vehicle, but works fine for the RV. I also have a flagpole receiver mount in the RV, so great place to put that up. And then uh, usually I'll be on vacation when I'm taking the motor home. So it's gonna be more about relaxing and maybe doing DX and a few other things. Uh, so that's how I plan to use this antenna. Uh, again, if I was in an area where there were trees, it, I would probably take it man portable and just deal with the additional weight. Um, what else can I say about this antenna? Oh yeah, big thanks to Chameleon for sending it my way and answering all my questions. I promise you guys, I will get back to you on what I find with the 80 meter uh, extension here. All right, um, in general, hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different than my normal videos. So I'm the Tech Prepper, be strong, be safe, and be prepared. Ah, that was good.